Hello and welcome back to Master Jory in the Game of Thrones mod for Crusader Kings 2. Now this video is going to be going out a bit late, so I thought I'd use the opportunity to ask you a question. What time do you want videos to go out? Is the time the videos usually go out good for you? Bad for you? Discuss. Anyway, that's about as much questions as we're going to have. Let's have a look at our character, who appears to have a million titles. Alright, yeah, it's actually... I think before it hadn't actually got all of his titles in there, but we're also designated Regent of Winterfell, which I think is a new one. Okay, neat. Are we the vassal he likes the most? Um... Oh wait, I need to go back down to us, don't I? Uh... He doesn't like us a lot. He's only at 29. Hmm. Maybe he's trying to improve opinion of us. Anyway. Right, we're still trying to expand into this land. We have... It's this guy, it's 14% per year, it's our brother. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. We'll gain some money. We'll let, let things go. Ooh, a northern tradition melee in Lady Lysa's uh, land. Well, of course I'm going to go. We'll see how it goes. We like melees, don't we? Hmm. Oh, why did the map jump over there? That's very weird. Uh, the early stages of the melee were chaotic and frenzied and have left fields trampled and villages half torn down. Many have been forced to leave the battle either by injury or defeat, many at your hand. Now you stand among the remaining warriors to begin the final melee. Okay, we're facing Artos Ulgray, who has 75 uh, skill, personal combat. That's pretty good. Ours is 40. We have no skill, apart from the fact we're trained. So essentially what this is, what this means for us is we were trained, but we didn't put any effort in one way or another. Nothing about our personality really lends itself to fighting or pushes away from fighting. We're just, we, we went through training. His, on the other hand, he's a duelist. He's brave, so he runs in. He is honest though, so no sly tricks from him. You know, I, I think that we're going to lose terribly, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, well. We do have a lot of these because we're zealous. Let's see what we want to go for. My will is strong, and the gods protect me. As you and Artos engage, you slip up and leave an opening in your defense. A skilled warrior like Artos needs no invitation to strike. Artos overwhelms your defense, and with a mighty blow sends you sprawling to the ground. You look up at him, towering above you, ready to deliver the f finishing blow. But I'm not done yet. Our z we're going to embrace the power of the gods, and we're going to take another shot at it. Okay, we weren't wounded either, which is good. This time, the gods will guide me. As you and Artos engage, you slip up and leave an opening in your defense. Artos strikes to try and take advantage. Artos overwhelms your defense and with a mighty blow sends you sprawling to the ground. You look up at him, towering above you, ready to deliver the finishing blow. Yield! Yield! Artos lowers the point of his weapon and extends a hand. I accept, he says. Back on your feet. Okay, he has won. Engaged us in a fine uh, in a fierce duel, but we are forced to yield, and that is us out of the tyranny. Okay, uh, is Brandon Glover versus Joseph Little? Let's see. Oh, that's definitely going to go in. Uh, oh wait, no, I didn't look at the second guy. Yeah, it's definitely in Brandon's favor. Uh, and oh, I, I guess he won, but we didn't get. Oh, I oh no, he must have won the previous one. I just didn't read it. Yeah, reading's hard. It was Edwin versus um, Brandon, and it was even. So when they engaged, Brandon won. Well, there you go. Well done, Brandon. After many hours of intense battle, Lady Liza's melee is finally over. The final group provided a fine spectacle for all those present, and many approved of the good fight you provided. Yeah, yeah, that was good. New Lord Commander on the wall. Uh, the Lord Commander has died. Ulrin Rothermont will replace him and serve the realm in these troubled times. Who is the previous Lord Commander, out of curiosity? It was Tywald the Frail, Marbrun. Okay. Ulrin is here. Interesting. Uh, we should be getting... I'm, I'm keeping an eye out. We should get White Walkers at some point. I just don't know when. I think it's a random time to happen, but they are enabled. Trust me, they are enabled. But the thing about random time to happen is that it might not happen for a very long time. So, there you go. 
Uh, yeah, somebody's trying to kill us, but that's because we're paranoid. That was what the previous event that I clicked through said. Mora is trying to kill John. I don't know who John is, but I feel, Mora, that we should probably imprison you for that. Did that work? Is she imprisoned? No? I'm Tamara. She's now ran off to the lover's land. Okay. Well, it would be nice if it told us about that. And then here, uh, Leona Cassell. I don't know, why don't you have a faith education? We're very faith-based right now. Mora managed to avoid my guardsmen and fled, the court, uh, fled to the court of Lord Malador. Okay, well, she'll carry on fear over there. I have successfully collected a tithe in Winterfell. Well, that, I sent some money to my liege. Good, we have helped him in some small way. Just kind of what we're aiming to do. Just help him out. He doesn't seem to be doing very well for help, but we are helping him out. Lord Aaron, uh, that would have been our um, uncle-in-law, which isn't really a thing. Died of a distant tree, that means our aunt is now, uh, yeah, she's now around. But actually, interesting. The more interesting part, apart from the fact that our aunt is unmarried, is that uh, Lady Daisy, nobly, who is my cousin, holds some land. She holds Ethering. Oh, some very close land. You can't get a non-aggression pact or anything. No, she's not that close. For a second there, I thought she was actually of our, uh, I thought it was a matrilineal marriage, but it wasn't. Hmm. But she is matrilineally married to the Frost here. Who is in line to more things in Blackpool. Oh, wow. There's a chance that uh, a member of our family, well, a side member of our family starts inheriting some more money. And some more lands. Your kinsman, Rob Cassell, has died. Now falls upon you to uh, decide whether to make the funeral a big and special event or keep it a small and private one. Honestly, I'm not entirely sure who he is. Oh, so he's Gawain Cassell's son, who just came of age and then died of rabies. Oh. Well, I guess a private funeral, if it's us deciding. My lord, since I arrived in Castle Sorwin, there's never been a shortage of soldiers reinforcing the troops stationed there. Under our guidance, they believe fame and fortune awaits them. Nice, he pushed up the levy reinforcement rate. Do we want to switch where he is right now? We are pushing up the number of men we have. Are any of these lower? I don't think so. I think this is the lowest. Although it's also probably the one with the most men in it. Yeah, I'm going to move him back to the capital. Just to... Uh, that'll, that'll mean that there's less um, men here. Because that'll, that'll go away. And then this one will have more men. Yeah, which it does. Good. Quest Council support. You would like me to vote with you? No, because I am currently trying to get your lands, Mr. Manderley. Dear Master Jory of the Dawn Forest, I hereby invite you to a grand feast in Winterfell. Your presence at the feast would be greatly appreciated, and I look forward to your attendance. Lord Rickard. Of course I'll go to the feast. Why wouldn't I? Lord Ethan of Stony Shore died an unnatural death. That's my uncle. He's a fisher. Um... Wait. He is my uncle. How is he my uncle? I'm kind of interested, because I was assuming that meant he was married to my aunt, but he's not. Uh, oh, because we share a grandmother. I see. That's it. A raven has arrived from the Sistel. We should rejoice, as winter is coming to an end. Yes, huzzah. Fantastic. Uh, we've arrived in Winterfell, where Lord Rickard greeted us warmly to his feast. Bread, salt, and awesome beer has been served, as is the guest right. And the most delicious aromas are coming from the kitchen. Well, thank you for having us. Who can we imprison this time? Master Hugo. Who are you trying to kill? Me! Oh. Well, that's not on, really. He has ran away to the court of Captain Megdar. Megdar the Merciless of the Sellsword something. For a second there, I thought that looked like an egg, and I was kind of worried. But it does not, so we're good. Uh, we need a new court physician. I guess we have to go send for a new maester. Last one tried to kill me. Not exactly uh, great. You know, I'm starting to think we're not paranoid and we might just be right. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're not paranoid. People are just trying to kill us. Um, our priest isn't doing anything. He should be performing charity, probably. Uh, you should be serving the court and... Yeah, you're pretty good at your job, Jason. I mean, you don't like me, but you're good at your job. Um, we get 
Bar this guy's in the plot against me. I can't imprison him because I haven't asked him to stop. Okay, I'll ask you to stop. Hmm. Yeah, it's not great. Anyway, feast is over. Oh, that was it. Nothing exciting happened at the feast. We just had a feast. What's that about uh, John Aaron? He's now known as the Just. Yeah, just John Aaron, nothing more. He is excommunicated, so we actually probably absolutely hate him. You're more zealous. John has been a leal and able servant, having successfully completed many tasks in aid of the Dawn Forest. We've seen it as the right and honourable course to reward him with certain incomes and grants as to foster greater loyalty. This is my spy master, John. He doesn't like me very much. Mora is trying to kill him. What do we think about John? John is celibate. He's a scientist. You know what? I'm seeing that he's a scientist, and I think we're probably not. We probably don't like him very much. I owe him nothing. Nothing. Right. Um, how are we looking on that next castle town? We need how much? 300. Oh, there is another 250 um, tax income, which is quite nice. We are already making a significant amount more than we were with the first castle town, so I like where it's going. Uh, my daughter is suffering from dysentery. Well, I'll call for the court physician. A great male in northern tradition is being held in Winterfell. Well, we have to go. Yes. Um, is there anything that we can do with... Sorry, I was just wondering if we had any family members who need married off. Um, no. We're good. Let's check our siblings. Well, he's 33. Beth Cassell is 25 and married. Okay. Any other Cassells? Uh, it was Gowan's life. Wasn't it? It's the only other one that's still going. Uh, yeah, it was Kalon, Gawain. Yeah, okay. That's fine. We don't need to worry about that then. After being skillfully treated by Maester Jason, my daughter is feeling much better. Perhaps he's deserving of some praise. What do we think? Do we think Jason's deserving of praise? I, th I think so. I think we could probably praise him, especially as he's not trying to kill us currently, which is, you know, good. Well, we failed an attorney. We were dropped out and we were knocked out by this guy, apparently. He's a suspected kinslayer. A hedonist. A drunkard. I don't think we like him very much. Where is he? He's down there in Lady Old Wen's land. Oh. Hmm. The Jory Harclay and Sir Halas Whitehill sighted each other. And... Jory at 45. Helis, uh, oh, is dead. In a dishonorable action. Oh. Oh, that's not on. Really. Not on at all. Lord Lud Whitehill and Bran Little sighted each other engaged in combat. After a fierce duel, Lord Lud prevailed, forcing Bran to yield. Yeah, Lud. Now that's a true, uh, that's a good fighter. Yeah. Lud, Benjamin, Ashwood remain in the field, and uh, Benjamin was forced to yield and then Lord Lud is the winner. Danny Bowl died under suspicious circumstances. He had married my uncle. Okay. Let's see what else we can do right now. People that just seem to die and murder non-stop. That's uh, Edmund Linderley has now been killed. He's now Lord John of Newkeep. Okay, and that's within our lands. Okay. People are having land taken away from them. Every morning, especially when the weather is as splendid as it is today, you like to go out on your balcony, lean against the railing and take in a deep breath of fresh air. The view from up here is spectacular. But this railing doesn't look right. I have inspected the railing, only to discover that someone had sawed through the supports. The slightest nudge would have been enough to make the whole thing topple or topple over its side. Had you leaned against it as usual? Who would have done a thing like this and why? I am. It, somebody's sawing through our. Oh, I don't know. Shocking. Shocking. Right. We should uh, get those carpenters back and uh, complain. Right. Ooh, we actually are going up money fairly quickly, but I think it's because we're running on a very fast speed as well. Ooh. Roger Branch is dead. He's married to uh, Ross Branch. And Lady Bella of Widow's Watch is also dead. 
fact, he was murdered, and now it's held by uh, my brother-in-law, Bran. Wait. My brother-in-law, so this would be, wait, one of his siblings, my wife? My sister-in-law, my wife, yes. Okay. That seems all right then. Don't need to worry about it. Finn died, bedridden and infirm. Good for him. That's exact. We wanted him to be dead earlier, but the fact he's dead is pretty good. Right. 209. Oh, big wars going on up here. Ah, no, still not the White Walkers. Press council support. No, I'm still trying to take your land. Unfortunately. And my lord news from the area of a great trial at court. Lon lord Eddard Nobley was imprisoned by Lord Paramount John Aaron and stood accused of sedation and conspiracy against the realm. Lord Kane Umber presided over the trial, during which the prisoner was ultimately found innocent of all charges and released. Hmm, all right. Oh right, yes, it's Lord Eddard Nobley, who is of course the grandson of Eddard Stark and son of Lord Jon Snow. Means he may have other traits, which I will not uh, go too far into. Master Jory Cassell, I hereby invite you to attend the tourney of Sweet Sister. Well, we'll attend, yes, exactly. Ooh, a group of craftsmen have come to your court and shown off their work. They present you with fine goods, of which you are sure there be demand for in the realm. No seeing your interest, the craftsmen ask for some capital to start up a workshop, saying they lack funds to do it on their own. You know what? Yes, I could use someone to fix the my uh, balcony. Definitely. Definitely. Right. It is Sir Edmund Waxley of Wickenden's turn to jest, but to the crowd's shock, he stumbles out in the tourney field late and clearly drunk from too much black beer, with none of his armour and only slightly more of his clothing. He tries to mount his horse, but trips and falls comically to the ground, unable to even unable even to ride. Lord Osbert Borrell of Sweet Sister seemed more than displeased, publicly rebuking and disqualifying him from the tourney. Tut tut tut. Word of an epidemic. We've received news of an epidemic in Illyria. The information is vague, but people are but the word is people are dying like flies, and the fear of disease is spreading as fast as the affliction itself. Furthermore, the condition is re reported irreversible as well as incurable, and the scattered records of the events are worrisome. With no source of evil revealed, people are turning to their gods and on each other to protect themselves from contagion. Many call it a great, a new great sickness. May the gods make all heathens suffer. So where exactly is it? One major epidemic. Deliria over here, is it the pot? Or what's the major epidemic? The great sickness. Oh wow, it's in a single one in Mantaris. Okay. Where uh, the Valyrians currently are. A club for to dwarf fleets. Oh, interesting. But that is definitely not good for them. I'm gonna put it on disease mode and just watch this because usually these explode. My liege, I write to you of good news. I have successfully sabotaged the Eerie, causing it causing considerable disruption. Your humble spy master, John. Oh, good job, John. It's been so long I'd forgotten I'd given you that job, but good job. Um, right. There's Ludden Turney. Rickon Liddle is. We voted on Rickon Liddle before. Lud White Hill is. I'm going to place a bet on Lud White Hill. Oh, what? I should just put my special interest. Wait, is he old now? He is. He's not as good. But he's also fit as well. Which means that uh, it doesn't do quite as much harm. I am going to place a bet on you, Lud. All in. Also, non-aggression pact? Oh no. He doesn't like me. What's the disease? Blood won against Sir Albert. Oh, of course he did. Blood won against Sir Kraken. Of course he did. Blood won against Rickon Liddle, our second choice. Randall Royce and Harlan Black were next to Jousts, and... Uh, Harlan ventured on horse, leaving Sir Randall to be declared the winner. Okay. Lud and Sir Galen went to joust, and Lud, of course, won again. 
After many til tilts and broke, uh, sorry, after many tilts over several days, only two knights remained undefeated. Lord Lud Whitehill and Sir Randall Royce faced each other in the final joust. After many tilts, the final executed jousting, Sir Randall was eventually on a horse, leaving Lord Lud Whitehill to be declared the winner. He truly deserves it, and I would like my money. Ooh. We built the war chest, which means we actually make more money as well. And means that we can upgrade King's Course with Castle Time? And we need small estates too. How do we get small estates too? One of these upgrade into small estates? It does, but we need patrol posts. Huh. Guess we'll buy patrol posts instead. The disease has already spread to one province. Oh dear. The jousting is over and it's spread to another. A great uh, melee in a northern tradition. Well, of course I'm gonna come Duncan Woolsfield. To all good lords of the Iron Throne, I declare that Lord Paramount John Aaron of the Vale has upset the delicate balance of power in the realm by refusing to relinquish control of the N Kingdom of the North to one of his vassals. Let this tyranny be known throughout the realm, and his power restrained for the good of all. Signed, Princess Ariane Martel of Dorne. Oh, wow. The Dorne have issued a proclamation against our uh, top level liege. Okay, we have got through the first stage of the tourney, uh, of the melee. We're now facing John Wolf. We might be better than him, but only because he's a teenager. Okay, well, my will is strong and the gods protect me. We saw a weak spot. And with gods guiding my sword, we broke through, knocked him to the ground, and... Yield, I yield. All right, sure, back to your feet. Lies defeated and we have won. John, I'm gonna mark you. There we go. Right, we have beaten him. We're now facing John Whitehill, who is our exact equal in every way, and he is married to my cousin. I will defeat him. My faith in the gods give me strength. We see a weak spot. A vulnerability in John Lord John's defense is not much, but it's all we need. We broke through his defense and knocked him to the ground. Yield, I yield. Back to your feet. We have won. We have won once again, and we shall seek a new opponent. Lud Whitehill. We're gonna get destroyed. Oh no. Okay. My faith in the gods gives me strength. We are overwhelmed by Lord Lud's immense strength as he strikes us with a body charge. We are sent reeling, which gives him an opening. He overwhelms our defense, but we're not done yet. We're going to try again. Okay, no wounds. This time, my will is strong and the gods will protect me. We found a weak spot, a vulnerability in Lord Lud's defense. It's not much, but it's all we need. We broke through his guard, knocked him to the ground. He lied, sprawled at our feet, completely at our mercy. He drops his weapon and throws up his hands. Yield, I yield. Well, we have defeated Lord Lud. The gods may very well be on our side. We have won. After a fierce duel, you force Lord Lud Whitehill to concede defeat. He removes himself from the field, nursing his injuries whilst we seek a new opponent. Bran Flint, my brother-in-law. We shall defeat him too. We circle each other, tense and focused, scan him for any sign of weakness, any openings in his defense we could possibly exploit. And once again, we will attack the gods on our side. We saw a weak spot. It's not much, but it's all we need. We broke through his defense, knocked him to the ground. He lies sprawled at our feet, completely at our mercy. But he rolled to the side, wounded, but still very much alive. Okay, we'll try again. The gods will guide our blade once more. But before we have a chance to spot an opening, Lord Bran launches a furious frenzied attack. We panic and are immediately set on the back foot. He overwhelms our defense and we are forced to yield. He lowers the point of his weapon and extends a hand. I accept, he says, back on your feet. His battle fairly won. Melee lasted for many hours. Scores of combatants were injured or defeated before you finally fell in the final battle. You've earned much respect and honor for making it to this final duel. I will win next time. And that is where we are going to end the episode for today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.